terrorists, witches, demons, devils, elves and dark elves. The Black Clover world is filled with varying types of villains and antagonists. With the introduction of devils and Black Clover, and with the current arc focusing on finding one of them possibly named Majicula, people are thinking of the devils as the true villains of the series. But I have a theory that the true villain is probably something you didn't even think about, but something that has still been built up and foreshadowed since the very beginning of the series. I think this villain is going to be the god of fate, or the gods of fate. If you don't know what fate is, it is the development of events beyond a person's control. It is often regarded as a determined by a supernatural power. Now this means if you are fated to die at the age of 22 car accident, then you will die at the age of 22 due to a car accident. It means no matter what you do, you will die at that age in that way. Even if you know your fate and you say you're going to give up driving in cars to avoid that fate, fate will change course and find some way to get you into a car so that you will die. Fate is inherently different from destiny. Destiny is something you are destined to do, but you can use to follow your destiny or go against it. It's basically, destiny is a fork in the road, which do you choose? You can actually have both fate and destiny at the same time. Like, you could be fated to die at 30 in a battle, but your destiny can decide whether you were a random soldier in the battle or the hero commander of the battle. Now, sometimes fate can be applied to your entire life. Like you can also be fated to have an injury and your destiny is now how you react to that injury in your life. Fate has played a huge role in the series of Black Clover and has been referenced many, many times. Vanessa believes that the god of fate had actually given Asta no magic. In that same fight, Asta gets his arms cursed by Veto. He can't use his arms anymore. He even states that fate had done this to him and he said basically screw you fate. Follow this logic. Fate had chosen for Asta to have no magic. Him having no magic would set a course of events for Asta to eventually fight Veto, which would eventually lead to him and several Black Bulls being forced to go to the Witcher's Forest to heal his arms, which means the original plan for Asta's fate was for him to be controlled by the Witch Queen and to kill all of his friends and become a weapon for the rest of his life. How truly dark is that? But of course Vanessa would get her own version of fate manipulation with the Red Thread of Fate. She would save her friends, herself, and save Asta from his grim future, and they would get out of there alive. Just think how different Black Clover would be, how the Black Clover universe would have been shaped. Noel, Finral, Vanessa, and more would all be dead. This means that originally, Ladros and Mars were fated to die in the Witch's Forest, and therefore they would not have been able to try and take over the Diamond Kingdom and stop Morris and his experiments. In this context, it completely changes how the elf invasion goes. In this, Fate timeline, the Black Bulls might have gone to the Witch's Force as a group, seeking revenge for the basically mind control of Asta and the death of the other Bulls, Yami leading the remaining Black Bulls in a war against the Witch's Force. This might have led to a completely different elf invasion, where there's no Asta's Demon Destroyer sword in this scenario. Basically, you might have Wufuru actually killing Magna and continuing on his rampage, maybe even at some point turning into a Dark Elf. In this turn of events, with Asta's loss to Yuno, he might even join the Black Bulls in the war against the Witch's Forest. Yuno also might even just be getting corrupted, the loss of Asta causing his 4th Leaf Clover turn into a 5th Leaf Clover, completely changing many, many events, which means that in this, Vanessa's actual power might have prevented the original fate of Yuno turning his 4 Leaf Clover Grimoire into a 5 Leaf Clover Grimoire. We understand that since the gods of fate would control things like this, it means that Lick's death, Zara's death, Noel's mother, Asir's death, were all dictated by the gods of fate. Showing that these gods of fate may not be so malevolent. I bring up Norse mythology a lot when I talk about Black Clover because of the many points of inspiration and reference that Tabata puts into the story from those myths. In Norse mythology, there are a group of gods called the Norns. They manipulate and dictate fate. They are witches that use threads in the Well of Fate to do so, which almost perfectly matches up with Vanessa, a witch who uses threads to manipulate fate. Hmm, I wonder if Vanessa is a Norn, or of Norn descent. Anyways, the Norns, while not necessarily that strong on their own, but together, paired with the Well of Fate and their threads, they are far and above both Thor and Odin in the Norse myths, because fate as a concept surpasses any sort of strength. One of the quests for Odin in Norse mythology was for him to gain the knowledge or power to be able to stop Ragnarok, where he would be fated to die 
to Fenrir. Now even as a young man before he gained the ruins, before he learned cedar magic from Freya, before he sacrificed his eye for ultimate wisdom, Odin defeated an infinite sized being in Ymir. Odin would then create multiple infinite sized realms with the body of Ymir, and then added time to them. So that's how powerful Odin was as a kid, or as a teenager, or as a young adult, before he even really got his magical powers. Odin has spells that make him or anyone else invulnerable. He has victory manipulation spells. He even has some minor fate manipulation magic himself as well with cedar magic. But he still couldn't change his fate. He still died to a weaker opponent in Fenrir simply because he was fated to do so. The Norns were in a way the villains of the Norse. Not necessarily that straight up villains, basically like what the Jotnar were. But they did make Ragnarok happen through their manipulation of fate. Them causing Baldur's death would actually lead to the trial and then imprisonment of Loki. This imprisonment would lead to Loki leading the Jotnar into the halls of Asgard, leading to the Battle of Ragnarok. So technically, the Norns created the Apocalypse. Paradoxes of fate are something that can happen when you bring in things like fate manipulation. For example, Vanessa was fated to die by the hands of her mother and her friend Asta. But, because of the many events set in stone prior, it let her break her limits and gain the Red Thread of Fate, which completely changed the fate that was already set. Vanessa being treated poorly by the Witch Queen ultimately led to her escape, which would then lead to her powers being developed through familial bonds. This fate paradox, in a way, parallels one of the tales in Norse mythology, where Odin knew his fate. He knew that he would die at the hands of Fenrir on Ragnarok. But at the time, Fenrir was basically his nephew, and was very young, the size of maybe an elephant instead of the size of planets. Fenrir was actually Odin's nephew, because Loki and Odin became brothers through a blood ritual. And since Fenrir is the son of Loki, that would make Odin the uncle of Fenrir. And despite Odin and Fenrir actually getting along greatly, Odin's fears got the best of him. His quest to stop his fate got the best of him. He would eventually bind Fenrir. Because remember, Odin at this point, he's learned enough to know that eventually Fenrir is going to kill him, that's his fate. So he tries to bind Fenrir to make it so that Fenrir cannot kill him in Ragnarok. But this binding is what ultimately turned Fenrir to become evil. He was betrayed and lied to by what were his friends and family. This led to his rage being built up by the time of Ragnarok, making him way more powerful, and thus leading to his lust to kill Odin. Odin and the Witch Queen both, in a way, solidified their own fate. Which leads me to what might be the fate paradox created by the Gods of Fate themselves within Black Clover. The Gods of Fate led Yami to be shipwrecked in the Clover Kingdom, and led him to being a foreigner where he was mocked and bullied most of his young life. But this fate turned him into the man with the power of a captain. If Yami stays a fisherman, he might not have actually worked hard to get way stronger. The gods of fate made Henry bedridden with an illness, causing his parents to abandon him, and thus leading Yami found the Black Bull's base. Fate caused Gosha's parents to die, leading him on a path towards the Black Bulls. Luck grew up raised by his mother only and as a commoner, and lived a rough life since his mother was somewhat crazy and was really hard on him. This fate led him to the Black Bulls. The fate of Osir's death led to the poor treatment and development of Noelle by the rest of her family, but this eventually led her to the Black Bulls, to where her power would truly blossom and gain access to the magic of the Valkyrie. The fates chose Fenril's mother to die, setting the events for his father to remarry and thus create Longris, and led to the downfall of Fenril, leading him to the Black Bulls to where he can fully develop. The fates chose for Zora's father, Zara, to be brutally murdered by his fellow squadmates, leading Zora on a path to develop his ash magic into incredibly potent trap magic, making him one of the biggest counters in the entire Black Clover universe. This of course also applies to Asa and Vanessa, and pretty much every single Black Bull. Each Black Bull was given negative fates, but turned their fate into a positive one. One where the Black Bulls are by far the most powerful squad in the entire kingdom, and might actually be able to take on the gods of fate in battle, completely ending their reign of fate to bring free will to the realms of Black Clover. Defeating fate has been a huge thematic thing for the series, with Asa stating this after his arms were cursed, and even Yami stating this to Vanessa before he broke her out. Fate has been the secret antagonist the whole time. Now what if it were to be personified into the Norns, and the Black Bulls must face them? They would have a great counter already with Vanessa's own fate magic. 
Charmy's ability to regenerate her magic stores, Asa's anti-magic, Yami's dark magic, Gosha's mirror magic, which could let him make copies of Vanessa, meaning there could be 10 or more of her, and therefore 10 red thread of fate, and maybe that would let her match or overpower the gods of fate. A fate paradox leading to the downfall of the gods of fate, the timeline of fate they created inadvertently leading to them creating their own counter, and thus leading to their downfalls. That would be a pretty interesting story, and would be a pretty also interesting way to explain why Asta didn't get magic. The gods of fate just simply didn't want to give him magic, as in Norse mythology, there are good Norns that are malevolent, but most of the Norns are seemingly benevolent, and they don't really, they'll just give you a bad fate just because they choose so. Giving Asta a bad fate is something that Asta had to deal with. Giving him no magic ultimately led him to train his physical body and then gain the five leaf clover grimoire. And when the gods of fate stepped in again by making Beto curse him, he pushed through. That led him to the witch's forest arc. And while the fates likely intended for Asta to be the weapon of the witch queen, Vanessa's own fate inadvertently created through the multiple fates that the Norns set up led to Vanessa getting her own fate power countering that. So like I said, this leads to an entire fate paradox. If you mess with fate too many times, it'll come back to bite you. Just like what is probably going to happen with the Norns. If, I mean, I, when I say probably, I guess that's not really true. The Norns in Black Clover aren't even confirmed to be a thing, although there is said to be a god of fate, which could be gods of fate too. But I think they could be the true villain of Black Clover. And it makes sense. You have fate manipulation on the side of the Black Wolves with dark magic, with anti-magic. Anti-magic plus fate manipulation versus the Norns or the gods of fate in Black Clover. That's going to be a pretty potent combo to try and defeat the Norns. If you have gods of fate, you cannot have free will. Because in order to have free will, you need, you need either the concept of fate completely ignores and discredits the concept of free will. You can't have fate and you can't have free will at the same time. You can have one or the other. And so if you defeat and kill the god of fate or the gods of fate in Black Clover, that means that free will is now granted to everybody. So pretty interesting thing here, guys. Just kind of a theory. Let me know your thoughts down below if you agree or disagree with any of what I said here. I do believe that it's very possible the gods of fate could be a pretty major villain in Black Clover at some point. And if they're not the true villain, maybe they will be a bit more important than we think. Let me know you guys' thoughts down below. Please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Plus...